Hello, hello. How are you all doing? I am glad to be here with you. Um, I always like to invite you by, um, to invite you to put where you are in the world um, in the chat. And can you all hear me? Great, I see lots of familiar faces um, and also lots of new faces, so that's exciting. Welcome, welcome. Okay. From Ireland, it's it's late there, so good evening. <laughs> um, we will wait just a few more minutes and then we'll begin. It was very loud in the playground right next to my house earlier today, but it's not so bad. I was thinking, I wonder if everyone's going to hear all the kids yelling. <laughs> They're very happy that it's spring. Hey, Nadia, I think I found out how you do your bell so that it rings. You know, I think let's I think I got it going. Thank you so much. Um, I think I got it so that it rings on Zoom, but on my other platform that I was using that was a whole different story. Yeah, because so, did you have to go to a music original song for musicians on Zoom? Ah, okay. I think here I'm going to ring it. Actually, it's a good invitation to ring. Because yeah. because somebody did it. How do you do that? You walk me through, and I said, I know somebody who needs that. <laughs> Is this working for you all? Can you hear it? Not now. You can't hear it. No. Huh. If you do it a bit louder, if you do it a bit louder, it, the, the, it was quite too loud. That's fine. And it's it continuing to ring. It's doing fine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I did I did connect with uh, Zoom support a while ago. So <laughs> thank you, though, for doing that research for me. I super appreciate it, Tish. You're welcome. Well, somebody was doing it. I said, wait a minute. How did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, actually, let's let's invite the bell and take a breath together this time. So if anyone's joining us, um, they'll just kind of join in and then we'll begin together. So take a nice deep breath, put your hand on your heart if you want that point of connection. So make this just a moment for yourself to connect mind and body, to congratulate yourself for being here, taking this time for you. To honor the community, all of us gathering in different places, but at the same time. And a very, very warm welcome. So I am Nadia Colburn. And as I said, I know many of you, I many familiar faces and also many faces that um, I probably haven't seen before. So a very, very warm welcome. I'm here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I thought I would just really use this time 
for you. So you could ask questions about your writing life, meditation, writing, kind of just do a little bit of spot coaching. Um, you can, um, and then if there are questions also about Align Your Story, I'm happy to answer those. Uh, registration closes for Align Your Story tomorrow and it won't open again until next year. But whether you want to come on to Align Your Story or not, I really want to have this time be for you. So um, you can ask questions to try to get your writing life into alignment and um, see where you want to focus a little bit more and what the bumps are that maybe I can help you with. So I got some questions on the questionnaire before we began, but um, if anyone wants to start by just unmuting yourself and asking a question, I would love to um, answer you or, you know, see what I can do to help. Out of curiosity, how many people are there? Um, on this call now, mm -hmm. it looks like there are 96 people on the call. Are there more signed up? I don't know how many people signed up for this free coaching call. It was just open to everybody. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> you didn't need to sign up. <laughs> do you have a question, Valerie? Um, how can you help? Oh, which Valerie? I the saw. one, you, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. that, that you, did you have a question about your writing that I can help with uh, or how how do I settle down I mean sometimes I feel like sometimes I feel like the meditation is enough but other times I feel like I just need to like have a five minute you know space where I can just go mm -hmm. and, and, and get it out well, I think that's great. I think that's a great question. Um, I like to get some of the questions in advance because I see that there are a lot of commonalities with the question and that kind of like, how do you settle down? How do you make time for your writing? How do you kind of get into the work when there are so many other things that are pulling us away? Um, and I think your question, then you had some answers there, which were pretty great. So the meditations that I offer are really, really helpful. The yoga that I also offer, you know, it's like in school, you see little kids. I was just talking about the kids in the playground. They're running. Their bodies want to be moving. If you can move your body, engage your body um, instead of telling it to quiet down, get it, get your energy flowing and then come to your writing. You'll have a lot, a lot more clarity. And those of you who've done the meditations and the yoga in Align Your Story. I think the yoga is a very important part. And then also, Valerie, what you said was sometimes just have a brain dump. You're not necessarily going to know where you're going until you allow yourself to really start to put things on the page. Um, and I like to also, the first module of Align Your Story is called, you know, free writing, where we're really looking in depth at what structures best support us in this moment as writers. So we're going to experiment with a lot of things to find out what's working. You know, you're going to like in, in the course, like what works for you. So whether you're in the course or not, though, you can really, you know, I give you a lot of guidelines in the course, but be very curious, like when does it work? When doesn't it work? And then set up those conditions so that you're setting up the conditions for yourself. And don't be afraid of needing to write great work. Just keep on showing up and 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 coming to the page. So that's, um, I think, a question that we talk about a lot in Align Your Story and other groups that I run, because having that accountability and those structures for yourself are super important in figuring out what works for you um, at the moment. So I hope that's helpful. Um, Lorna. Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, nice to meet you. Thank you. Um, when I was looking through some of the material you shared, um, it says there's an option to work on a project maybe that you've been working on for a while or, or not. And I was just curious, um, like the pros and cons of doing that, like, cause this particular project I'm thinking of, I've been trying to write for probably 12 years <laughs> and, um, and then I'm like, well, maybe that's because there's so much fear around what I want to share there and fear of criticism and also not maybe um, like it's kind of creative nonfiction, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. um, fear of, you know, saying things that maybe people won't like 
and all of those things? Or do I just, if I, if I was in the class, do I just do the class, like, like go through it, learn, learn the right, like, you know, just deal with those things, not on a project per se, like just kind of curious about the pros and cons of that route. Well, I think everyone is different and you would have to um, feel what's right for you. But my instinct hearing you is that you could use the class to work on your project because this is a project that's been calling you for a long time. And so you can use the tools in the class to help support you with that project that wants to come through you. And so you don't need to work on the project every single time you sit down to write, but I would probably try to come to the class with the intention of how can this class help support me in this project that's very big and that you have some probably, you know, understandable fear around. Anytime we push ourselves out of our comfort zone, we have some fear. So how can you have that supportive community that's built into the class to help you? and write pieces of it, start to share it where it feels comfortable. I think one of the things um, that's so amazing about this class is that you have the opportunity to share if you want to, but you don't need to share if you don't want to. And there are some modules where I explicitly suggest that you do not share, that you practice writing in ways that you are listening to yourself and getting comfortable with the material that you're putting on the page without always needing to worry what someone else is going to think. Once it's on the page and you've done it and it's sitting on the page, then you can worry about what does someone else think? Am I going to, you know, edit it? Or are those old fears that I don't need to really hold on to anymore? But kind of pushing them aside so you can actually have the safety to do that work in the class and really focus on your project. So I would say, you know, you can use the prompts and the modules to be building into your your story. And then if if resistance comes up, I'm there to, you know, and the community's there also to offer, you know, coaching and suggestions about why is this hard? How can we help support you do what you want to do? Okay. Well thank you for that. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Um, and we have a lot of people here on the call who have been in Align Your Story. I see Louisa and Joyce and Carol and Kathy and Penny. Um, I think Catherine was on the call and Tish. So, um, you know, I maybe, you know, in the chat, perhaps other people could. Um, I see Deborah also. Um, Phyllis, I think, is here. So, um, maybe people who have been in the class also can t say a little bit about their experience of, of what what they've you know experienced because definitely that question of how do you get writing and how do you work on larger projects are questions that come up a lot in the class and um i'll, I'll come back to some of them but i want to just come to some other people whose hands are up so of course thank you so much thank you larna Alyssa. Did you have a question? Hi, um, sure. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I can relate with um, what everybody shares so far about um, kind of being extra critical of my writing because I just got back into it. But I've been wanting to write my story for a long time. And, um, and I started in this program that is just basically having me do stream of consciousness writing every day. Um, and um, that's pretty much all I've been doing. And I'm all over the place. It's, it's like completely all over the place. And when I try to come up with some type of structure for myself, like I have absolutely no idea where to start. So it's like, um, I'm just wondering, is it better for me to just continue with the stream of consciousness stuff until I get a little more comfortable with that? Or should I start giving myself some type of guideline as far as like okay maybe I should just start with telling one story from one particular day so that way I can narrow it down to something because I'm literally I mean I'm going from one year to the next year to how I feel now to it's just it's too it but I mean it's at least allowing me the creativity but I don't know if that's if it's better to do it that way or if I should if I should give myself some structure. 
So that's pretty much my question. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. And I think that there's a time and space for everything. And so um, if you looked at the first module and align your story, that's about free writing, but we build from that and build structure in. So it's kind of like you do the warm up exercises and then you need structure and boundaries. Um, so I would say free writing and stream of consciousness can be great, but then it can start to feel exactly as you said, like all over the place and and one of the reasons that we actually want writing and one of the reasons that writing is healing is because writing gives us structure it gives us a container and it gives us order where life can feel like it doesn't have those things so we want to write in a way that gives those boundaries those structures those orders right? Just the free writing on its own, I feel like is only just a very, very small part of the beginning process. And then you want to move beyond that. And I really think that there's great benefit in every single stage of the writing, including, you know, the final polishing where we really make something beautiful and put it all together. So the way, like, you know, I talk about align your story because it's really follows my philosophy of writing is that we build up and build the pieces get our range of a, as a writer expanded, but then also learn how to put those pieces together and work on them and finish them. Thank you. Um, so yes, someone asked Jacqueline, um, can you come through again? Yes. So um, you don't need to pay again. If you want to come through the live sessions again, there will be some cost for that, but you'll have lifetime access to all of the online materials. Um, and it will be a lower cost. You won't have to pay the full cost if you wanna come through the live sessions. Um, I saw just Kathy that your hand was up. So I wanted just to give you a chance to say something if you wanted to or ask a question. Okay, well, I was just gonna say uh, in response to what, what the other people have said, uh, First of all, going through this again um, is awesome because I am not the same person I was the first time I went through it. And part of that's because of the class, uh, because of the course, because you bring up, you have things that come up, but you've written them down so you can examine them. And so things that you may think are your true story may be real, but they may not be true. Um, they may be things that have, are, have been influenced by other things and then writing it down um, through this process helps helps you with that. And so um, I just want to say that it's a, it can be a very profound experience. And I have found that I do not share very much ever. <laughs> okay, twice I shared um, over the course of several courses um, on the on the Facebook page, because what I write tends to be longer than really works well on that. And I don't want to take it out of that. So don't feel like you have to put it on the Facebook page, or if you have something you just want to ask a question about, that's it. I've done that. And then the last thing is, one of the fun things that I, I did when I was would, would get stuck and feel like, oh, I can't write about this, even with the structure, is I pretended it was an improv, that I was on stage and somebody had thrown me a, a word. And I had to figure, write something about it instead of say something about it or pretend to be something. And it was A, a lot of fun, but B, it was amazing what came from that because it led to other writing. So I just wanted to throw those things out for other people. And one other thing, the small group that I was in for the first time we did AYS, we still get together once a week and it's mm -hmm. three years. So I love that, yeah. People make really, really strong connections with other people in the class. So it's um, it's a beautiful thing. And you'll keep coming back, as Kathy said, right? Back to your writing and notice different things, but be able to finish them. And Kathy, like, I feel like you've been a very active member of the group, even though you haven't necessarily posted your writing. So there are lots of ways to be engaged in the community. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Amy Lou. Hi, um, I have a blog that I've been working on for a couple of years now, and I got really, really organized with it. And I have a plan, themed plan, 
for the year. But since early to mid February, I've kind of not really done an awful lot of writing. And I don't know whether that's like I'm doing, trying to do too much writing or I'm maybe subconsciously putting too much pressure on myself to do the thing. So you're, but it sounded like you had not done any writing for about a month. Is that what you said? Or am I not sure I completely understood what you said? About two months. About two months. So it's February and March that I've barely done anything. I've maybe edited and posted things that I've written before February and posted those. But other than that, I've barely done anything. Yeah, that's really common to kind of get the energy up and then to find kind of like blocks, you know, even when you're in the middle of a project, like just that next that next growth period, you need another, you know, many of us need another kind of re, um, recommitment, re-energization, is that a word? Um, re-energizing around the project, reimagining. Um, a little rest and then coming back. But all of those things, something we, you know, talk about a lot is like, what does your schedule look like? So, you know, I would want to ask you, well, are you scheduling time for yourself to work on it? And sometimes if you schedule too much time, it can be a turnoff. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, you're like, oh, well, I'm going to get to it. And then you don't. So I really always suggest really looking at your weekly calendar and saying, okay, where's two hours or three hours this week, I can sit down and work on it and give yourself something manageable. So you're not setting yourself up for failure and put it on your calendar. And then if you say, well, I had that date with myself and I didn't show up, then you really know, well, something else is going on what's happening? What do I need here? What am I afraid of? What is my resistance teaching me? And we have a whole module in Align Your Story on resistance, because in those places of resistance, there's also a lot that can be learned if we have the tools to go in and look. And sometimes the biggest breakthroughs are when we're in that place of resistance, but you need tools to kind of learn and listen and see what's going on. So I'd say, you're in an interesting place and I'd be curious to, to kind of help you kind of figure out more what's going on by looking at your schedule and looking what happens. Yeah, I don't really have any schedule, any kind of schedule at all. Generally, yeah, I would, so. yeah, I would suggest that just, you know, be really, you know, Monday morning from 10 to 12 and Thursday afternoon from 10 to 12 again, or I guess that's not afternoon, Thursday morning from 10 to 12 again, you know, just just put that time on your calendar. Okay, that sounds like a plan I can work with. Yeah, great. Um, Lisa, did you want to say something? Oh, can you maybe unmute yourself? Hi, how are you? Good. Um, so everything everyone has said has definitely resonated. And um, I really, this is my second time coming through the course. Um, and what I think it was Natalie, no, Valerie said, um, how do you settle down? And that was always my biggest issue I would say when I would sit down to begin writing because before Nadia's class I always had this I don't know some kind of anxiety about writing or a fear I guess that it wasn't good enough or you know what am I really doing or maybe that imposter syndrome or whatever but I don't know Taking Nadia's course really taught me how to integrate the, mod the body, mind, and spirit practices through the yoga and meditation. And that helped me so much to settle me down. Um, and even to this day, 
I can't really come to the page or just start writing. I have to do some kind of yoga or even a five minute meditation, some deep breathing to begin. And I find, I don't know what it does. It just opens things up, I guess relaxes me. And it just really helps connect me in a deeper way. And one of the greatest takeaways of this course for me was how to listen to my body and to my gut when I'm when I'm writing, because sometimes I start tensing up and I do, then I'll say, why am I tensing up? And I start listening to myself. So that that's, you know, helped me like to trust my gut too while I'm writing and not be so afraid. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, and that inner critic that Nadia taught us about, like, tell it to go away already. But anyway, bottom line is Nadia is there 100% of the time to support, encourage, and answer all our questions. And, you know, you're so approachable, kind, warm, and sincere. And I really thank you for all that. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I really love having, you know, your voice, other voices here who've been through the course, because I really think of it as a community where we all help each other. Remember, like, oh, when you get stuck, remember, you can do this. And I think a lot of it is about getting out of our own way. So um, was it Amy Lou who just asked the question about, um, you know, working on your 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 novel, your or whatever, I don't maybe it wasn't a novel, but your longer piece. And and I'm wondering, you know, is there some way that what wants to come through you is getting stuck? And we get stuck in the left brain and that inner critic, it should be this, it should be that. Or Lorna, your question about, you know, your long work that you're working on and what will other people think? And, you know, for a lot of us that what will other people think are people that we love, you know, people who are close to us who are maybe part of the story. And we just kind of have tools to let to let the bigger story, to let the bigger perspective, to let the bigger truth, which is shifting, as Kathy reminded us, come through. So we're not so attached to it, but can be in a place of discovery. Um, and that comes from that point of connection between mind, body, and spirit. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Aviva. Hi, Nadia. Hi. Thank you so much for hosting this. It's such a lovely, lovely turnout and warm, warm words being sent and shared. I I'm lost. <laughs> I'm trying to embrace my um, lostness. And I, I, com I com Nadia knows a little bit about this. I completed the manuscript that I didn't intend to write. And it's a large commentary on the um, a Torah on each particular parsha, each particular portion that's read once a week. I did it. I disciplined myself. I posted it through another group that I had joined and I beta tested it for a year. I did not intend to write this at all. There were writers in the group. Everybody had a different project. I was looking to do something completely different. And this popped out and it grabbed me and it kept going. And then I was on a roll and I couldn't stop. And now it's done first draft. I'm lost. Everybody has that I've talked to has a different point of view. Don't touch it. Just go find an editor. Other people said, no, you can't do that. You've got to touch this and you've got to do that. The... For me, what I know about myself is once I, it's kind of like, what do you do the day after your kid gets married? You know, you <laughs> got to have an activity. <laughs> Go on a vacation, you can clean, but you got to do something. And, and I had nothing. I didn't have a good transition. I had the discipline. Uh, writing is very hard for me. I'm challenged. Uh, in other areas. And so it doesn't, um, I use small words. And I've learned to turn that into an asset. 
but I'm still lost with um, with my asset and my lostness and my, you know, manuscript waving like a little kid. You know, Mom, what do I do now? It's a yeah, that's interesting. It's yeah. actually reminding me a little bit. I'm in a slightly different situation. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just wanted to respond, um, which is. I like your analogy of like, what are you going to do the day after the wedding, having something else that you're excited to work on, you know, because one of the things that's hard with a writing project is letting it go, letting, letting, letting this piece that you've worked on for a long time that came through you that, you know, letting it have the next chapter of its life, right, like a child going off to the next chapter of its life. And so having something else to engage in so you can do both so you can you can get the book manuscript edited, or you can do the editing yourself, but you have something else also, some other creative project that you can engage in at the same time so that all of your energy isn't, you know, with with the with the manuscript that wants to have its own more adult life. I just love, I think the metaphor that you used is so perfect. Um, so, so I would say, you know, finding a way to be present with your creative self now might help you also finish that other project and let it out into the world. So it's not either or, but both and. And I get that. And it's logical and sensible and very adultish. It's my, my nature is I want to, okay, so now what do I do with this? And you know, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a direction, you know, and I don't know if I'm supposed to wait, you know, and something's going to float down on a cloud and be the perfect editor, publisher, person who's got the right resource. And, and I want to finish it because I'm worried one, because I'm old. And so, you know, a friend of mine just pulled a manuscript out, uh, children's books, rather, she had it in her desk for 30 years. She's had two books you know, she was in a place in her life where she could do that. You know, I, I'm just not in that juncture. And so, uh, to my knowledge, and, so, and, yeah. and so it's, it's the pressure feels different than if I was 40. So I would just say maybe like, as you're, you know, working on something, like break it into small steps. So instead of looking for the perfect publisher or the perfect publishing opportunity, just take here or the perfect editor right just look if you feel like you need an editor start putting start putting um feelers out for who might be a good editor and interview them and start working with them another thing i always tell people to do is take a small section and try to publish a small section so when there's a big job like this to kind of break it into manageable chunks and that's something also that we could talk about in Align Your Story. And I'm going to be offering a publication workshop as well later. So that could be something we could talk about there as well. But, you know, Align Your Story could also be a place where you could talk about those, you know, manageable chunks for your bigger writing project while you start to engage in some, some other creative project if you want um, at the same time. So thank you. I look forward to hearing what next steps are. Congratulations on having your manuscript. It's very exciting. Um, Lorraine. Hi. Uh, it's, it is wonderful. I, was, um, <clears throat> I have a very specific question for you about Align Your Story, but I just wanted to say a couple of things. One of them is that I was um, I had signed up for the 31 days, you know, of the very short um, mm -hmm. writing exercises, which I would say is like a taste of, of, of what this other project is. And um, at one point I had asked you a question in one of the sessions. Um, uh, okay, I have 60 pages written. Now what do I do? You know, and um, Aviva, I had those 60 pages written last February 2022, right? And so then I didn't know what to do with them. Like I didn't know how to organize them. I thought I had the whole thing together and I was like, I'll just need to figure out which order it needs to go in. And then last summer I did the 31 days in a row and I wasn't, no, I'm not gonna work on that project. I'm just gonna do free flow thought, you know? And so, and then by itself, parts of the story started emerging and a whole different, I, I relate to what you're saying where it wasn't what I intended to write. 
Um, this was a new take on a medieval tale, Ragnel and the, you know, Gawain and the Lady Ragnel. Okay, I'm going to talk about, about it from Ragnel's point of view. I'm going to do a one woman show and I'm going to do all four characters and no, 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 no. Then I start doing the 31 days and then whole different text starts coming out. You know, uh, I'll just say one line, for example. I am no longer my father's daughter, my brother's sister, my king's subject. That line comes out. And in the story, she's banished into the woods, right? And I, and I wrote another line. When did my banishment no longer become my suffering, but rather my freedom? You know what I mean? And th so this story is now like completely a different thing. It's no longer the king went into the woods to find the deer and the this and the that. And he met the ogre and he cast a spell on his sister. It has nothing to do with that anymore. And I was like, well, now what do I do with all my 60 pages? So what I realized a couple of weeks ago is they're my backstory. You know, like a detective. Why did the king do this? What is his problem? Why didn't she do this? Why did she go there? So it's my backstory. And I'm now writing, what does Ringel have to say? And I think the tale is like Raniel and I, her and I having a discussion. So sorry, just about. to interrupt you just for a second. So um, how can I help you? Like, what's your question? What? Okay, so I've signed up to align your story. Great. I, explore, I signed up on the weekend because I thought, well, let me go check what it's about. And what I, I need to explain better to me, the different streams that what I see is there's different modules and each module has different, similar parts, you know, some meditation or yoga, mm -hmm. some this and that, and writing, reading, things to hear. So I think that's great. That's like a like an extension. I feel I felt it like an extension of the 31 day exercise. But then underneath you had, do you have a little bit of time, a lot of time, or are you working on a project that's already there? Can you explain to me what the difference is it like literally once I choose a stream, I'm on that stream for the whole three, five, eight modules, or I can flip back and forth? You can flip back and forth. It just gives you guidance. If you look in the introduction section, and I, you, you know, I'll tell you more, but it just gives you guidance for how to spend your time. It's not like all the material is there for you. It just gives you a little bit of guidance for how to use the prompts and how to spend your time. But okay, you're not... So you could say in April, I just have 15 minutes a day. So I'm just going to go on this short thing. And then when June comes, I got more time. I can go follow that other stream. Exactly. Okay. okay. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And then, yeah. And Aviva, you know what I thought? I thought you could put your book in a knapsack and let them hitchhike across Europe for a few months. And while they're doing that, while your book is doing that, you write a few other things, like maybe the forward of your book, like where did it come from? What does it, why did you even write it? And while you're doing your forward, your, your book is simmering somewhere, maybe on that beach that's behind you or something. And then you'll come back to it and you'll just, I just think you'll know what to do. Yeah. And then, and if you write a forward or something that could be a standalone piece that you could try to publish on its own to kind of start the publishing process for the longer the book as well. So there's a lot of, you know, synergy between what people are working on. I also had a question someone asked me on the form, um, would Align Your Story be a good course because I really want to finish my novel or will it be too much time away from working on my novel? And I just want to say again, you can use the prompts and you can use the lessons and the exercises to work on what you want to work on. So what's different from this course from a lot of other writing courses are you don't need to spend a lot of time reading and commenting on other people's work. I know in, you know, Grub Street has a writer incubator classes where people are working on book length works and they need to read everyone else's novel three times over the course of the semester. So they're reading and reading and reading and reading and reading other students writing, which can be helpful, but it can really, really take away from your own writing time, your own voice, and the kind of sacred space that you need to create around your writing project. So there is community here, but there's also a lot of sacred space to guard your writing time and to, I always say, read greedily, read the things that are feeding you. If you like the writing um, excerpts that I talk about, great, learn from them. If you don't like them, great, learn from what you don't like 
And I always have supplemental readings so that, you know, you're learning to just feed your own inner ear and use the course very greedily to work on what you want to be working on. <laughs> so, mm. um, and yes, Lorraine was talking about her own. Oh, I think you're asking uh, Tabinda. Sorry, I thought you were asking me. Lorraine was talking about her own project, which I look forward to hearing more and maybe reading some of Lorraine. So welcome, exciting. Uh, Tabinda, that was you. <laughs> um, hi, Nadia, how are you? Good. Um, thank you for hosting the session. It's been really lovely listening to everybody. Um, I think I had a question. Um, I'm kind of submerged in everybody's discussion now, but my question was related to more meditation and yoga. And this was one of the reasons why I'm really um, um, attracted to your program. My, my One of my things is that I have trouble dealing with triggers, mental triggers, like people like Louisa talked about anxiety and everything. But what, hap what happens to me, and I've been dealing with this for the past couple of years through my academic writing as well, and now that I've switched to creative writing, that I would get triggered or my inner energy would get drained by something, by interacting with people, and it would take me hours to get myself back into that like mode of writing and that just wastes my day away or yeah. my night away and I am just stuck in that trigger so that is one of my biggest hurdles and I'm also trying to focus on my health overall and my energy overall and that is one of the reasons why I was looking into energy healing but I just thought that I would pose this question and if you have any like small tips that I can take away from right now yeah yeah, that's a great question. Um, so in Align Your Story, I have um, I have something called a Shavasana for writers because, you know, after a yoga class, we lie down in Shavasana and, and, and yoga teachers say often that's like the kind of place where we're teaching our nervous system to, to incorporate what we've just done and to settle, to, to learn those new patterns and then we get up and we go about our day, but we don't just like do the yoga and then go. So sometimes we bring up the writing can bring up difficult things. So I like to have a Shavasana as a kind of boundary between the writing and then going about your life. So we talk a lot about setting up your writing with meditation and yoga, but I think it's also very important to close down the writing session with a time where you're coming back to the present you're coming back to your body, you're laying aside what you were working on so you can reintegrate. And that's something that, you know, we talk about a lot and that we have practices for. So, you know, you can do that for yourself, but I also have this, um, you know, Shavasana for writers in Align Your Story. And then I have a new bonus in there also, which is a whole course helps people, you know, work through difficult material if you have it, but there's a whole bonus specifically for that. So how to work with difficult material and not get re-triggered. Um, and I think a lot of classes where people are working from difficult material don't necessarily have those fuller supports so that, you know, people aren't re like get re-triggered and then they have to stop. Yeah. So I really have a belief that's like slow and steady, be yeah. really gentle with yourself, really trust yourself. What's you know, you don't need to go straight into the heart of what happened. And often um, just saying a little can be leaving things out can be as powerful as putting them on the page. Right. So, um, you know, also I find working in different genres sometimes, you know, if you're getting to a difficult part, maybe all of a sudden you want to start writing in poetry or, you know, break into song or to, to shift those modalities so that you're really nourishing yourself and also nourishing the whole reading writing experience. So it's definitely, I think, a great question. And um, I think being mindful of it um, can really be helpful in, 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 in that's, that's really it. helpful. That's really helpful. And I'm, and I'm also actually currently, I'm also working in two different genres because I started working on poetry last year so that manuscript is in progress but then I'm also working on my screenwriting so like switching modes is difficult as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and Great. again um again just being aware of those triggers and then really putting you know as and for Amber also and other people are saying putting supports around around the process um and I do think that paradoxically the more conscious we can be about our writing practice 
the more we can get out of our own way, let it come through us and then not get so attached. Because what happens is like we, we our muscles, um, literal and metaphoric kind of clamp and we get stuck. So having those ways to stay in a safe space, um, letting the flow continue. Lovely, great. Thank you so much, Nadia. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth, um, I just wanna say thank you, Joyce. Wonderful to have you here. Um, <coughs> and um, I look forward to having you in Align Your Story again. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I've just I've just managed to spill a glass of water. So um <laughs> would you like I was trying to, to you? No, no, that's fine. I now now will be fine. Um my question is, um, and I, I wrote it in the forum before, but I thought I should put the hand up now as well. Um, is editing. If I write a piece um and I've I've as you say, I've got it down on the page, and then for one reason or another, one piece needs editing or if they're, they're more short pieces than than a, a major piece so far and I get stuck I don't know where to start approaching the editing process I need to change that I need to add another voice um there's one bit that I know which was a, a, a powerful story but it ended up being like um a factual chronology rather than a, a story mm -hmm. and I need to change that but I don't know where and where do I do I start in the middle of the story? Do I start at the end of the story? Do I break it up? Do I go into his voice, or do I be me, the observer of what happened? Or how do I approach that editing process? It's I the, there are pieces there that just are gathering dust. Um, yeah. Because I've blocked myself. I say, well, I don't know how to do that, so I won't. Yeah. So I introduce in Align Your Story, I kind of introduce the editing process um, in the last third of the class so that once we have kind of the, the processes of staying in the flow, getting connected to the mind and body, because often we're like really associate um, that connection with first drafts and with free writing. And this is going back to one of the earlier questions, you know, just free writing, free writing. But but if we have those processes of staying open, of trusting our gut, of trusting our ear, then we can use those same processes when it comes to editing. Because mm -hmm. often we'll think, oh, okay, I have all these, you know, holistic approaches to free writing and to first drafts. But then when it comes to editing, I need to go straight into my analytical mind and figure it all out like it's a puzzle. Instead of, I can use those same techniques of trusting the flow of listening to my story, learning, like, where does this voice want to come in, making it a dance you know, doing that deep listening to your own work so that you can bring those techniques into your editing. And also the very way that we've read really closely other people's writing, we're developing our ear. So we can bring those um, reading skills into our editing. And we like, well, this is how, this is how Maya Angelou did it. This is how Maxine Hong Kingston did it. Remember when she, turns from this voice to that voice at this great moment, I can do that here too. And you're kind of trusting your own intuition. And then there are other techniques of reading it aloud or, you know, at a certain point, you know, getting a, a friend to read it, but really, but again, not always relying on what does someone else say I should do, but yeah. building yeah. those techniques within yourself. So you, you trust and enjoy the editing process as well. Okay, well, that's very helpful. Yeah, thanks. I can see how that would be uh, very helpful. You. All right, I better go and clean up the water. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> um, I wanted just to say someone had asked me a question on the form, which was a really interesting question about um, being disabled or being in a wheelchair um, and not having a, an opportunity to go to a lot of external places and would um the writing be less interesting if writing from her, her own life if she hadn't been to as many places and what she also shared on the forum was a, a life that had a lot of inner experiences 
um, a lot of challenges and a lot of triumphs. And so I wanted to say, you know, if she's listening, but also um, for everybody, you know, you get to say what's interesting in your life. You don't need to have an outer journey to make your work interesting. We can have a deep um, journey, whether we're in a wheelchair or whether we're in, you know, a bed, whether we never travel from our home. I think of Emily Dickinson, who, um, mm -hmm. you know, traveled extremely little and then started like after a while, didn't leave her house pretty much. But her incredible richness of her 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 writing. Um, so I would say whatever your experience is, there is richness there and people will be interested just to really, um, again, trust your own authority, because we also want to hear from different people's experiences, different bodies, different places, different languages, different, you know, all the different things that we we have in our life. Um, that's our story and we get to tell those stories. So, um, Allison. <coughs> Hi. Hi. Thank you for this. This is very interesting and informative. Um, okay, my question is this. So I'm like a multimedia performer type writer, everything kind of person. So can that be done in the group? Like, can I create songs and do them as part of what I'm doing? And uh, okay. And the yes. other thing is, will you be present, Nadia, for some of the uh, modules and stuff? So the modules are all housed online. So you can tap in and listen. To, I always encourage people to listen. And I say, you know, like, listen when you're taking a walk so that your writing time is your writing time. But then there are coaching calls like this um, for each module, including I'm doing a coaching call in July and in August this year because I had a lot of people say, I'm a teacher, I'm a professor, I'm traveling this spring, whatever it is, <laughs> I'm not sure the timing will work. And I'm always sad when it comes to <laughs> an end at the spring. <clears throat> so I just wanted to give people more time to work through the material. I'll be live on those calls. And I'm pretty sure we're gonna move from a Facebook group to a Google Classroom. Um, I'm just working out the last minute details of that. And I'm very active there as well. So you know, the people who are in the course, you know, I, I know the people, if, if you're present in the course, we'll, you'll get to know me and I'll get to know you. And we have people working in mixed modules, uh, I mean, mixed media. We have a lot of painters, actually, other songwriters. Okay, um, that's cool. And painters. All right. <laughs> oh, Lorraine, you're a painter? <coughs> okay, okay. So this is really like an art support group with yoga and meditation. <laughs> singer, songwriter, uh, singer songwriter painter okay cool 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 all right cool mm -hmm. and then do we write down what our goals are like for for our own help and then we write them <laughs> group and, and then, then we kind of like of course there are like i have a lot of setting intentions and then at the end of each module i have like a little self quiz so you look at what you've done um what you want to be doing going forward um, there's a lot of accountability. And if you ever feel like, wait, I'm not, you know, doing my accountability part, just, you know, ask for more support and you'll get more support. Okay. And you said that the hours are 10 to 12. No, I was just saying like, um, in that, in that, when I was saying that to, to schedule for, um, the, I think it was Amy Lou maybe who was working on a project, but had stalled just to schedule her writing time. I um I will send out a calendar of when the live sessions are, but they're all recorded and you can always ask questions in advance and then I'll respond to them um, and you can watch the recording. Um, and then the like the Google Classroom is kind of people are active on it at all times. So we have people in the class in Australia, um, South Africa, South Korea. Um, just in very many different time zones who feel like they're very much a part of the class. So there's a lot of ways to be active in the class, even if you can't come to the live sessions. I'm in South Jersey. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we're, we're different. Brie. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate your answers. Um, 
I want to just say one more thing. Uh, I did have a live a bonus for, you know, if you signed up early, you got lifetime access to all the future live sessions. But don't feel like, oh, I missed out on that. I shouldn't do it because um, you have lifetime access to all the online materials. And then there will, if you like the class and you want to come back through the live sessions, there'll be a way to do that in future years for, you know, a discounted rate for returning students. So, and you get a lot in this first year. Um, so okay. there's a lot of, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Um, let's see. Um, Alistair and then Catherine. Oh, hi, Catherine. Hi. Hi, Alistair. How are you doing? I don't know. I can't hear you. <coughs> do you, do you want to unmute yourself? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, well, maybe now you can see me in a moment, you'll be able to see me too. Uh, uh, Start video. <laughs> Ever can ever. Okay, I appeared. Um, uh, so towards the beginning, you used the word incubate or mm -hmm. like that. you know the cat that i was holding earlier as often as possible she incubates the phone charger <laughs> that's funny <laughs> yeah i guess um it's good to see you. I'm just going to, because time is short, I'm just going to go on to Catherine quickly. Okay. Um, thank you. And I will go back to, I have 1,001 things to do. <laughs> good to see you. Hi. Um, Catherine. Hi, I'm going to be going through this for the second time. And I didn't want to not say how the one word I think of when for having taken the Align Your Story is I am grateful. I'm grateful for your course and for the writing friends that you put me in a small group with. Um, they're wonderful. We support each other and we still meet once a week. It was in 2020, three years ago, that I did Align Your Course. The pandemic was tough. I started journaling and before you know it, I was writing every afternoon and it turned into a 70,000 word manuscript. And um, I sent it off to an editor and I'm waiting, but I will say that um, someone mentioned the Shavasana, you mentioned that and the poetry, which I had never done before, your poetry modules were for me Shavasana. It allowed me to walk away from my writing and try my hand at it, something new and wonderful. I have three or four poems I wrote and then go back to the work, the manuscript. Um, the yoga and the meditation were so helpful in improving my focus in writing and um, just really helping with the creative thought process. So everything about Align Your Story has been wonderful. And um, I did relate to Aviva a little bit and that when the manuscript was sent off, I felt like I had just sent my child off to college or they got married. And so um, I'm very happy to jump back in again. And I'm so happy to have lifetime access. And I just wanna totally say thank you, Nadia. You are the guru and the master of writing. <laughs> and I appreciate that um, I went through the program. I highly recommend it to all. Thank you. And of course, guru means um, that which brings the inner light out, right? Like, which takes you from darkness to light. And that's always something within you. So these, these processes, these methods, these teachings will um, bring forth in you your own light. And I love it that you're book is sent off to an editor, you know, I've been hearing about it progressing. So that's so exciting. Um, so many people have finished books in this class, have started books in this class, have published 
but also just have a new relationship to themselves, to their voice, to their creative life and to their own inner ear. Um, and so, you know, you can see it's a really supportive, amazing community. And I do love to be in this community myself. I feel very nourished by being with the amazing members of the community myself. So um, I wanted to, you know, just a few people had questions. If you have questions about the class, you can always send me an email, um, Nadia at NadiaColburn.com. Just respond to any of my emails. Um, enrollment for Align Your Story closes tomorrow. And if you, you know, if you try the class and you feel like, wait a minute, this is just not for me. What were all these women talking about? This is not for me. Um, it does come with a 30 day money back guarantee. I want to give you accountability. So if you sign up, it's you're saying I want to you know, I want to give some support to my voice. So I ask that you try the first three modules, just try them. And if it doesn't work for you, you get 100% money back guarantee. You know, I don't want you to feel like oh, I was pressured into this thing. No risk. But really to give your to give yourself that opportunity to see what happens when you get those supports for your voice for your writing and to have the community um and and these and these practices and and teachings um lorraine did you want to say something again i just wanted i don't know the last session you said did we have any favorite books and i wanted to sh to show this see how big it is hmm. have you all seen this book called the lost words no oh i actually have yes yeah look at <laughs> it's the, beautiful the paintings in it it's basically um a project there was you know the children's uh webster they had to take words out in order to make work place for you know computer and internet and things like that so a lot of the words were animals that were disappearing from this dictionary for children. And so these people put together anagrams. So poetry made on, um, made by the, the name of the animal, you know, like this. And then they um, basically just, the first letter of each word of the animal then becomes an anagram. And it, it just set fire across England to classrooms that began to say those anagrams as like magical spells to bring those animal ba animals back to it just the the um, I read I did read the um the poetry and listen to the poetry for the first module and there was the the homage to um Yeats and in it one of the lines was poetry doesn't really I can't remember the exact line but poetry doesn't really change anything Poetry makes nothing happen. Yeah, it makes nothing happen. But this poetry made something happen. And so oh, if okay. any of the artists out there, just go get your hands on it. It's just beautiful. Yeah. Well, in the in the in it is a beautiful book. Um, and I, I love actually that's a beautiful way to kind of bring some things together. But but Auden says poetry makes nothing happen. It's a way of happening, a mouth. So he complicates it. And that's kind of my question, right? Like how does poetry make happen how what is the relationship between language and being between the mouth and the object um you know and how do you want to make something happen and where do you want to make something happen with your voice your imagination um and i said this on one of my um one of my master classes, but Helen Keller said, language is as important is miss, I think she said something like language is um, more necessary to the mind than light to the eyes. And we, the world we live in is a world of, of because we're humans, it's shaped through language. And it's a communal activity, right? Because language is a communal medium. And, but how we tap into that is very powerful. The stories we tell, the stories we choose not to repeat. 
um, what we call into being. And it involves not just us individually, but other people and other species and our whole planet. So this work of sharing our voice, of cultivating our voice is much bigger than us individually. And that's why so much of it is like doing that work of connection, mind, body, spirit. We get out of the little ego into the bigger sense of connection into what wants to come through us. We can really create something beautiful. And and this will happen, you know, across whatever modality we're working in, in the class, but also outside of the class. I think you'll find you have many more possibilities for connection, for engagement, for energizing, for creating, not just on the page, but off the page as well, if you give the time and attention to your creative voice, to language, to your stories, to those places where we get blocked to give it a little bit more energy so we can flow again. So, um, so yes. Um, so Elizabeth, um, module one will be um, accessible through the end of the day tomorrow when Align Your Story closes. And of course, if you want continued access, then you can sign up for the course. I will ring. Thank you. Yes. Um, I will ring the singing bowl again. Um, And if you have any questions, I think you know where Align Your Story is. I have a lot, a lot more information on that page. And if you're curious about the course, I would encourage you also to just watch some of the video. Um, sorry, that wasn't meant to you. That was meant for everyone, not just Valerie. Um, watch some of the video testimonials, really, you know, what people have said about the course. Um, Phyllis, thank you. Um, for your kind, kind words in the chat. Um, <laughs> thank you. And, and also Penny for your, for your words in the chat as well. Um, and as I said, you'll see that, you know, it is, people really get to know one another and it's a very supportive, um, supportive community. So um, I will wing the singing bowl again. Thank you. And I'll just read one thing which um, which Phyllis said, because I, I think this is important. She says, um, you will not regret making the decision to join Nadia's class. Um, and, and I just want to say that because I think often we don't, you know, we're a little scared. I don't really need that. You know, oh, maybe I won't do this. Oh, it's an expense or whatever it is. Um, it's easier sometimes to say no, but there's no risk in saying yes. Um, and I've never had anyone regret it, right? I mean, if you hate it, you get your money back. But really, if we say yes to our voice, all kinds of doors open. Um, if we say yes to what wants to come through us instead of holding it back. I mean, that's just a complete paradigm shift. And also saying yes to having support, which I think is another paradigm shift. Yes, I don't need to do this on my own. Yes, I can get those structures. Yes, I can get those guidelines. Yes, I can be with community. So all of those things are things where you're not going to regret it. Um, and sometimes if we don't do it, there is that kind of like, huh, did I really, did I really honor what was wanting to come through me? What was I scared of? Or what was I worried about? Um, and I do have, if you, if money is an issue, I'm happy to work out a six payment like plan over six months at no extra cost. Um, so reach out to me with any questions. Um, I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and evening. And uh, I would love to continue to support you, work with you. Maybe take a moment. I'm going to leave you with a little, a little question, which is, i just take ring the bowl again.
So this is actually a two part question. The first part is, do you remember that first inkling that you had that you wanted to write? There was something stirred in you. Maybe you were 10 years old and reading a book or I don't know what it was. Maybe you were five, maybe you're 25, maybe you were 55 or 75. What was the a moment that you really remembered that first inkling of I wanted write? And, and take a moment and, and remind yourself of what that was like. And then take a moment now and I invite you to write what wants to come through you now? What's being called to come forth? through your individual experience. Maybe we'll just spend five minutes here and then kind of close out again in five minutes and you can continue working. So you can continue working on this. This might be something you might want to write into for a little while. Um, again, I would love those of you who are coming back through Align Your Story or coming for the first time, I'm so excited to work with you. If you have any questions, send me emails. I would love to see you in the class. It's a very robust, um, deep journey that we take together this spring and into the summer. Um, and as I said, I don't think you'll regret it. So if you have an inkling, I would encourage you sign up, sign up now. Um, give yourself, give yourself that support and and honor, honor your honor your voice. Uh, you can you can work in multiple genres on whatever work you want to finish or starting new work. So thank you again. Wonderful to be with you and have a wonderful rest of the day. 
be very, very well. And as always, reach out to me with questions. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Thank you.